Let's talk about sleep, baby. Let's talk about you and me and all the good things and the bad things that can be. Let's talk about sleep. Now that I have your attention, thanks for joining me. Today, I want to talk about sleep. I just listened to this amazing podcast. Actually, I've really fallen in love with Nicole Birkin's Better Behavior Show. She's a child psychologist, but also a nutritionist. She really takes a whole family approach, like a really holistic look at what's causing children's behavior. And so I went right back to the very first show. And what is the first thing she covers is sleep, right? Sleep is so fundamental, not only for kids, but adults too. I'm going to focus on the kids. But everything I'm saying also applies to adults, believe me. I lived through, there's a point in time in my life where I was up every hour and a half throughout the night, uncomfortable and bloated. And so I would get up, walk around, get rid of the gas, and then go back to sleep. So I lived this. Let's first look at what lack of sleep does. Like, honestly, your kids are cranky, they're moody. For me, I was foggy brained and forgetful. It took me way longer to get through anything. Things that should be easy took me forever. I'd forget things right, left and center. It was really frustrating. And some of the other things that show up, especially in the kids is 25% of the ADHD and ADD diagnoses often have a underlying sleep disorder, either sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome, which is hard to, if, if you don't know what you're looking for, that's why they recommend seeing a sleep therapist or a sleep specialist of some sort or have somebody look at it where they can monitor a child sleeping all night. I bet nowadays things like the smartwatches would do a good job of telling you whether the kids are sleeping solid through. Another tell tell like sign that your kid might have uh, restless leg syndrome is that they like turn in their bed and move all over the place because ADHD looks like an overchild kid honestly they can't sit still they get really rambunctious right it's an overtired child and so I made a few notes here so I wouldn't forget and honestly like it talks about like teenagers sleep cycles being so much later and that they actually still need 10 hours sleep so if your teenager wants to take a nap, let them. It's not actually going to affect their sleep later in the day. And for younger kids, they're talking between 11 and 13 hours sleep. So how do we how do we make this happen? Sometimes this is hard. Like kids don't want to go to bed. The first thing is make it a routine. Go to the bed at the same time every night regardless of whether it is a weekend or a weekday. Just keep it consistent so their body can get in a rhythm. Things like making sure there it's a black, like it's it's dark in their rooms will help. So blackout blinds in the summer, uh, cutting out screens. I know that this can be hard an hour before bed. So even if if that absolutely can't happen, which I would beg to differ, I would say that it could. Giving your kids the blue light glasses to block that light that stimulates their brain will help. I would encourage things like not eating too much before bed or drinking too much because they'll get up a million times uh, and encourage it like a nightly routine. And the one they suggest on the podcast was like the power hour, as he called it, the sleep specialist. He says 20 minutes of getting all the things you need to get done for the next day, packing lunch, packing your school bag, picking out clothes for the morning, whatever your routine might be, then 20 minutes of like hygiene, brushing teeth, bath time if you have a younger kid, that kind of stuff. And then 20 minutes of a relaxing activity, whether that's a meditation, a gratitude journal, um, reading a book, having like no screens, 20 minutes of like down relax time. I really love the insight timer for that. They have some really great kid meditations. Zach and the cat go to space. They have one about unicorns, a melting snowman. And like 95% of my kids are asleep within five to 10 minutes of these stories happening. I find stories actually work better. 
because they're actually engaging their brain a little bit, but it's really mellow. Whereas a song, they're not, they don't necessarily engage in and then their mind starts going. So if your kid has anxiety, their little monkey brain just keeps going. But if you actually have words for them to focus on and, and a, a, a scene or imaginary uh, movie to play in their head as they're listening, it actually keeps them more engaged and, and allows them to calm down and sleep a little bit better. So those are my tips. Again, lack of sleep can cause increases in anxiety, ADHD, ADD-like uh, behaviors. And I encourage you to take a, take a look at how your kid's sleeping and how often they're sleeping, how long they're sleeping, are they sleeping, are they actually getting into that deep REM sleep? Again, you're probably gonna wanna ask a specialist or someone who has some experience in this area, but sleep, is essential to growing and learning and your immune system and and just healing like your immune like everything is linked if you don't have that downtime your body can't regenerate 